Hey folks, welcome back to the channel for another Project Zomboid guide. Previously, I did a video on how to choose the perfect base, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. But since then, I've been getting a lot of questions about my specific favorites. So in this video, I want to take the opportunity to visit some of my chosen base locations, show you where they are on the map, and what makes them so special. We'll talk about a few fundamentals when it comes to bases too. If you do find this video useful, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Project Zomboid tips, guides, and gameplay. So, for the purpose of this video, I'll purely be looking at the vanilla areas of the map. So that's without the use of any map extensions like Raven Creek or Bedford Falls. As good as the map mods may be, it would take me quite some time to cover all of the base locations in those, and I figure we can always split that up for some other more specific videos to those mods. We'll kick things off with the Moldraw section of the map, which, whilst relatively basic, does have some fantastic choices for basing that are quite close to urban areas and resources of importance. The first base we're going to look at is a bit of a classic location when it comes to veteran Project Zomboid players, and it's known as the Isolated House. Now, this location isn't anything flashy, it's a pretty compact single-story house with a bedroom, bathroom, and open-plan kitchen and living room. Yes, I know I sound like a real estate agent right now, but anyway, the thing that really sells this is a base location that has an exterior fence and a relatively safe area around it too, whilst being close enough to town for a quick day trip. The fences will keep out most of the infected and if you want to close things up entirely it's not going to take too much supplies to do so. You've got a lot of floor space for things like car storage or farming which is always a nice bonus too. This is definitely a base for people that prefer something small and if you're lucky enough to get a spawn in the area it can make a great starter location especially. Next on the list is the large warehouse which sits right beside the main highway on the north end of Muldraw. Now this location has a lot of space to work with in contrast to our last suggested base, but the immediate challenge is going to be securing it. I wouldn't recommend rushing over here too early, especially on difficulties like Apocalypse, because it often comes with a lot of zombies that are going to need cleaning out for you to claim it as a safe base location. For me though, this location has a lot of upsides that are worth fighting for. For example, you've got a whole ton of crates in this warehouse, which makes for some really quick carpentry skill ups if you bring some books with you for faster XP. Not to mention that you can store everything you'll ever need to, in this warehouse. The other upside of this location is that you'll have access to the roof and some garage doors, which means you can plant crops on the roof and store your vehicles inside to keep them safe. Now, one thing to bear in mind with this base is that there's no bed in this building by default, which means you'll need to source one. However, there is a sofa, which can do the trick in a pinch. There's even a standard fridge freezer, which isn't too common with warehouses. On top of that, a bunch of the crates in this warehouse will hold construction supplies, saws, hammers, sledgehammers, even farming supplies, so you're going to get a really good early start. Okay, so my third and final pick for Muldraw is a bit unorthodox, but bear with me on this one. This location is called the Small Storage Facility on the Project Zomboid map project. I'll put a link to this in the description because it's really going to help you when you're plotting your route to these locations. Now this base location is outside of the busy areas of town, but close enough for a quick trip in without much difficulty. This base is really one for the interior designers amongst us, allowing you to get creative by knocking down walls between the storage bins, installing your own decorative objects, and really crafting a prepper hideout of your own design. There's only three entrances to this base location and no windows to worry about either, which is a real nice bonus. On top of that, build yourself some stairs and you'll be able to use the roof for farming as well as plumbing for a working sink. Place a rain collector above a sink in an enclosed room, then one block off to the side and you'll have a working sink underneath it. It'll even filter the water for you ready to drink. Something to bear in mind with this one, there's a trailer in the same compound that will hold a fridge and a microwave to get you started. There's also sofas in the storage bins for sleeping as well whilst you're setting up. Like I said, this base requires work, but it can make for a great location with a bit of effort and also help to level your skills in the process, which is always something you'll be thankful for in the long run. So moving on from Muldraw, I'm going to highlight a couple of bases that are still within the vanilla map, but in different areas. Now let's start with West Point. There's two locations I like to use here. One takes a bit more work than the other, but is arguably in a better location. Option one is Twiggy's Bar, location right beside a gun store. Unfortunately, you won't be able to access this gun store right away, as you'll need a sledgehammer to get through the metal bars on the windows, but it's good to know that it's right there when you're ready. Also nearby is a Gigamart, absolutely stocked to the brim with both perishable and non-perishable food. A lot of it isn't refrigerated, however, so try to get there as early as you can to save as much food as you can from rotting. You'll also, generally speaking, be in a, a 
really good spot. You're outside of town, but only just on the northeast corner, giving you a really easy loot run for both the original West Point and the expanded West Point if you're using this as a map mod. However, with a good location comes a little bit of work to get things set up. Thankfully, you'll have a fridge already, but you might have to spend a couple of nights sleeping on a wooden chair with this one. However, not too far away, there's a mini hotel packed with beds and bedroom furniture, so it is relatively easy to find once you're ready to grab one. The second location is going to be much quicker to set up. Almost everything you'll need will be installed already, but again, it won't come free of charge. There's often a lot of zombies in this area, so be prepared when you decide to head over to this location. With this one, we're basing out of the top floor of a corner store. With this one being on an upper floor, you've got the option of destroying the stairs entirely once you find a sledgehammer and using sheet ropes to enter and exit your base, which leaves you completely and utterly unreachable on that upper floor. The ground floor will also have a plethora of useful supplies like food, water and some magazines or books to learn from. Great for getting an early advantage. Right across the street you'll have a gas station too, but you're forfeiting a good place to store your vehicle or plant crops unfortunately. Still, this is a great place to be for people that want a quick start and minimal work with base setup. Rosewood is next up on our little tour of Project Zomboid Real Estate and honestly this area of the map is just fantastic for bases. There's a whole bunch of them here, but for the purpose of keeping this video relatively compact, I'll choose the two that I like the most. I'll likely do another video in the future anyway, with even more base locations. Anyway, the first up is the Rosewood Fire Station. This base has literally everything you would ever need, from plentiful room for storage and vehicles to easy roof access. There's a kitchen already installed, multiple barracks that serve as a place to sleep and a place to train your carpentry skill too, a TV and even a medical base stocked with supplies. To top all of that off, the firefighter gear is some of the best protective gear that you can get your hands on in vanilla Project Zomboid, and you can bet your ass that there'll be a few firefighters lumbering around wearing that gear. This place is just straight up a great place to be. There's a police station across the street too, if you're brave enough to take it on for some supplies. Our next location isn't actually that far away from the fire station, and arguably offers much better exterior defences to the shambling undead that are likely to come knocking at your door. This house might only be a single floor, but it comes with some pre-built farm plots and an exterior fence surrounding the entire complex. It's going to be much less likely that zombies will bash down your doors in the night for that reason. Just to the north of this house there's a very large school which has a library built in so you can get your hands on a whole bunch of books here and just to the southwest there's a construction site which is fenced off and has a propane barbecue inside which is really useful for when the power goes out. This barbecue can also easily be reached from the fire station base that we just looked at. Okay so for my final area of the map as part of this video we're going to take a quick look at it's Riverside and I emphasize that this is a quick look because honestly Riverside is one of the only locations I find that is actually quite difficult to find the perfect base. There's a few that'll work out but none to me at least that stand out above all else. Possibly my favorite location for Riverside is another set of storage bins. These ones are a bit of a step up from Muldraw's similar pick since they have an exterior fence around the entire compound. This will keep out any zombies in the area. Again, a lot of base materials that you'll need such as furniture and generators are already in these storage bins. There's even one with a mattress inside of which can be moved without any carpentry tools or skill, making it a great bin to visit early on to get what you need for that first night. Now, whilst there is a factory nearby for any construction supplies you might need and a gas station to keep your cars stocked up, this is almost all there is in this area besides some trailers. So to base here, you might want to secure a vehicle first and drive out to the location. Just know that it'll take you a bit of time to get to and from Riverside, so setting up a forward operating base is definitely helpful here. And for our last base location, we move over to the east side of Riverside in the gated community area. This one is much, much closer to the main town of Riverside, but there's obvious downsides for this one as well. The location for this one is right on the corner of the street, and whilst it does have exterior fencing, it's not all the way around the base. Still, you've got a nice patch out back that's a relatively well well protected area from zombies wandering in and trampling your crops. The big upside to this one is that there's a built-in fireplace. This might not seem like a big deal, but once the power goes out, this actually gives you the capability of cooking simply with use of chopped wood. Aside from that, there's plenty of storage
storage space in this building and room for a vehicle too inside the garage. That's all from me this time around folks but thank you very much for watching. I hope this gives you a few ideas when it comes to choosing your bases and please don't hesitate to put some of your favourite base locations in the comments section below as well. I know there's a ton of locations that people use and it might help someone out there who's looking for that ideal base so don't be shy. Outside of that I'm testing some of these base locations as well as the superb survivor mod on weekends at the moment starting at midday UK time over on my Twitch stream. I'm usually live for at least a few hours so you can stop in, ask any questions or just watch some gameplay live. The link is in the description. Thanks everyone and I'll see you all in the next one.